Hello everyone and welcome to day 6 of Killer Shrew Fans 12 Days of Reviews. Today marks the halfway point of this year's series, and as such I've got a little Christmas tradition for you to celebrate. Every year I like to take a look back at one of Schleich's old dinosaur offerings as a way to reflect on how far companies have come in regards to producing dinosaur models. It's also usually good for a couple cheap laughs at Schleich's expense. Previous reviews have looked at their olden days Baryonyx, Ceratosaurus, and Alice all extremely doofy models that were among the ugliest offerings on my shelf at the time. But honestly, I feel like there's been enough negativity in the world this year, so instead, I wanted to focus on something good during this year's lineup. Since I am a sucker for tradition though, we're still going to be looking at one of Schleich's older figures, but this year it's going to be one that's actually not half bad given its age. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Schleich Taurosaurus. Released in 1999 as part of the Replicasaurus line, this, to my knowledge, is among the first notable example of Taurosaurus in figure form. The only other early examples that come to mind would be the Tycho offering and the Walking with Dinosaurs model produced by Toyway. In fact, I'm sure it's no coincidence that this Taurosaurus came on the heels of WWD. But regardless of whether or not Schleich was riding some coattails, it's still good to see a figure of this animal and a fairly decent one at that. I think the one thing Schleich does well somewhat consistently are their Ceratopsians, and I don't think this one is an exception to that. It has a lot of old world charm to it, and I think it's going to be a fun one to take a look at. So let's do this! As always, we're going to go ahead and start at the head of this figure. Schleich have done a commendable job rendering the massive skull of Taurosaurus on this toy. The frill is sculpted against the curve of the back as the animal looks upward, and all of that surface area is covered in large scale details that transition into smaller scales around the eyes. The eyes themselves are a sort of haunted orange color, no pupils, which somewhat gives this Taurosaurus a possessed feel, and the fact that they're sunk in against those dark bags really doesn't help either. I'm also a big fan of the sort of waddle of skin beneath the animal's neck. There's some nice movement and weight to that area of the sculpt, which is something I always appreciate. The horns and beak are the only aspects of the head that feel somewhat unattended to. There's no texture or anything to them, and as a result, they look a little plain in comparison to the rest of the sculpt. Still, all things considered, I think this head sculpt is a fairly well done offering from Schleich, given its age and that it's... Well, it's Schleich. <laughs> Moving down the body, I don't think this is necessarily anything to write home about. You have some good examples of folding and bunching skin around the rotating limbs, but beyond that, the sculpt is basically just more of those scale details on an even larger scale. That and the overall proportions and shape of the body feel a bit off, if I'm being honest. Still, this style of detail work on the figure as a whole was pretty common practice for Schleich back in the day. I feel like this is one of the more successful examples of it. On previous offerings, it's really just looked like cracked, drying mud, but here it actually feels a lot more scaly in its appearance. Maybe not being painted with the colors of mud helps, I don't know, who would have thought, right? Looking at this thing from a dorsal view, you can see that, boy, those brow horns are pretty close together, aren't they? But you've also got a good view of the entire frill from this angle, as well as more of that scale texture on the top of the back. Schleich loved it so much, they made sure to get it everywhere, I guess. Then if we look at the underbelly, you can see more of that hanging skin in the throat region, and that the texture down here is largely the same as on the rest of the body. Even the soles of the feet have the same detail, which, God bless them, once they pick a style, they really commit to it, don't they? The feet of this Taurosaurus feature the correct number of digits, even if their presentation isn't quite right. You can see that the nails are painted with the same tan that's on the face, and as we go up the arms, you can see some great folding skin details around the joints. I'm particularly fond of the right arm, the buckling skin around the wrist, elbow, and shoulder really sells that striding movement, which I like. The thighs of the animal are quite beefy, particularly the right one as it flexes with the movement of the animal, but beyond that, the musculature in these back legs does feel a bit mushy and undefined, I gotta say. 
The pose is another great aspect of the figure that I appreciate. It's sculpted mid-stride with its head held up. It's one of those fluid poses that feels like it's pretty innocuous in its presentation, and as such, it could be interpreted in many ways. You could view this figure as simply walking, or perhaps in a charging stance, and I honestly don't think I've seen this pose on a model before, which is always great. I mean, I always like my figures to have a bit of movement to them, I think everyone does, but admittedly, there's only so much you can do in that regard before certain ideas start showing up time and again. This is the only Ceratopsian I have where the frill is sculpted and laying against the back of the animal. And perhaps that's because companies always want to emphasize the impressive skull shapes of these animals. And in order to do that, the model has to always either be looking forward or down, which can get repetitive. When you look at Schleich, their older figures are among the most inexcusably posed dinosaur offerings out there, but this one manages to be both fluid and different, which is great to see. The paint job is also fairly different by old Schleich standards. So many of their models were those dull, muddy, earthy tones which never helped the sculptural problems. This one is still fairly dull, with a grey-blue main body, tan highlights on the frill, face and horns, and dark shading on the limbs. And the application is pretty basic, I must say. But once again, it's different enough to stand out and it helps all of that detail show up nicely on the figure. For a quick measurement, this Taurosaurus comes in at around 7.5 inches long, or roughly 19.5 centimeters, and stands in at approximately 3.25 inches off the ground, or around 8.5 centimeters at the top of the horns. For size comparison, I'm going to start off by bringing in the Collectotaurosaurus, the only other model of the species I have in my collection. I actually reviewed this as part of my first year of 12 days of reviews, funny how history repeats itself. I didn't much care for the figure then, but it has grown on me over the years, and for anyone interested in the animal, it's the only modern example of an affordable offering that comes to mind. But anyway, here you can see how those two size up against each other. Next up, here it is with some Schleich counterparts, the Pentaceratops and awesome little Cetacosaurus, and this just highlights what I was saying about how Schleich seems to have had a good grasp on Ceratopsians over the years, and it's fun to see the evolution in style from figure to figure. Now for some Triceratops comparisons, because of course, first up, here it is with the Batat Triceratops, which I reviewed during last year's 12 Days of Reviews, and you know, for a Schleich figure, I do think this is a fairly good offering, but when compared to the likes of the even older Batat dinos, it really does look pretty sophomoric, doesn't it? I've said it before, and I'll say it again, you just can't beat the classics. Then here it is next to the amazing Safari LTD Triceratops. You know, looking at these two side by side, the detail work doesn't seem too terribly off on that old Taurosaurus. I can't think of another more accessible figure of such a popular species, so hopefully this will give you an idea of the size you can expect from Schleich's model. Then here it is with the Papo Triceratops and Papo Baby Triceratops. I know that old trike mold is pretty popular among Papo collectors, and given its age, I wouldn't be surprised if this would be another useful comparison for a lot of people. You know, if the Papo trike was smaller, you could actually get a nice little growth cycle of Taurosaurus on display here. Just kidding. Or am I? And finally, here is the Taurosaurus next to the PNSO Triceratops Doyle, my personal favorite Triceratops in my collection, and you can see that that impressive and big beast dwarfs Schleich's offering. But before we're done, I gotta bring in a Tyrannosaurus Rex for you, don't I? Here it is with the now obsolete PNSO Tyrannosaurus Rex Wilson, and it kind of looks like the Taurosaurus there is going for the throat with his horns, but he's... Mm, he's just not quite tall enough to reach. Wilson, would you mind bending down and helping a guy out? And that was the Schleich Taurosaurus. It's true that this model's age shows in more ways than one, and it relies on many of the same unappealing techniques that a lot of older Schleich figures do. But at the end of the day, I do think this is a fairly well-realized rendition of a largely underrepresented species in model form. I feel that a lot of its shortcomings can be attributed to its age, which I fully expect with a model that's over 20 years old. If this was a new 
release, we would have some issues, but as is, I think this Taurus Source makes for an enjoyable offering from Schleich, and I definitely dig it. If you have a soft spot for older dinosaur models and your collection is lacking in the Taurus Source department, I think this one is definitely worth tracking down. I don't think it's a centerpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're looking for a blend of some old world charm and a little bit of accuracy, then look no further. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this Taurosaurus. Do you own it? Are you hoping to one day track it down? Or would you rather see more companies making some new figures of the species instead? Drop a comment down below, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of 12 Days of Reviews. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. We're officially halfway through, and we're going to keep it rolling. Check back soon for another Ceratopsian review from a company that only recently returned from the dead.